Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. If you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below. And right next to it is the bell notification. When you hit that, when I upload videos like this, you'll be first to be notified. Also, Facebook watchers, I always appreciate a growing audience. If you find this information valuable, please share with a friend and also too, hit the like button. When I have a growing audience, it helps the YouTube and Google a longer rhythm. And also, it enables me to have a broader audience and I get better content. And if you have any suggestions for content, please leave them in the comments below. I always appreciate that. And thanks for watching. Enjoy. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. This video I want to talk about a common situation that many people have. They may not even know about it. And it's called gut dysbiosis. I want to talk about how it affects your whole body as a system. Now, we have a combination of good bacteria and bad bacteria at all times. And I always like to call it the 80-20 rule. We have 80% good bacteria and 20% bad bacteria in the form of what's called lipopolysaccharides. Lipo lipopolysaccharides, it's part of the immune system, and what it is, it's, it rests on the membrane of gram-negative bacteria, and it is an endotoxin. And we have it in small amounts, but the problem is, when we throw off that balance and we get the reverse 80-20 rule, we get 80% bad bacteria and 20% good bacteria, this is where those lipopolysaccharides can cause a plethora of symptoms throughout the whole body. Now, how do you get this? It could be anywhere from you have a bad diet. You may be in the standard American diet. Wheat, gluten, dairy, soy, peanuts, and sugar. You may be on a lot of medications. You may be on birth control. You may be a little bit older where you're not really producing a lot of hydrochloric acid. It may be all the above, but I want to talk about gut dysbiosis and how it's affecting your body as a whole and what can you do about it. So when you talk about gut dysbiosis, I always say that, remember, your, your stomach, your gut is your second brain. You know the phrase, if you want to fix your brain, fix your gut, or if you want to fix your gut, fix your brain? They work together because whatever you're putting in your body, that's what your body is utilizing as the raw materials. So, how does it affect the systems? It affects the brain. We have these two awesome neurotransmitters, dopamine and serotonin. Dopamine is our drive that makes us want to do things. Serotonin is what makes us relax. And the sad truth is 80% of serotonin is produced in the gut. So if you have a bad gut function, you're going to produce less serotonin. Also, dopamine. You're, get, you're not going to feel like you're not going to have any drive. In addition, it affects the brain, which uh, the brain, in the part of the brain called the hippocampus and the amygdala, that's part of the limbic system. That's our reptilian brain. Now, the function of the hippocampus is to convert short term memory into long term memory. So, when you have gut dysbiosis, this is why you may not remember what you did six hours ago, but you can remember maybe what you did six years ago. In addition, the GI system. Now, with lipopolysaccharides, when it gets too much, it causes inflammation. It causes leaky gut. Now, in our small intestines, we have these little finger-like projections called villi. The function of the villi is to, yeah, you, to, uh, to break down the food products for absorption. And within the villi, you do have the circulatory, you have the circulation system, you have the arteries, you have the veins, and you have the lymphatic system, which is part of your immune response. And so what the lipopolysaccharides does, it punches holes in those villi, so it decreases its function, and then you get this increased immune response. Thyroid. One of the functions of the thyroid is for metabolism. Now, we produce a hormone, thyroid-stimulating hormone, to the thyroid gland to release the hormone. Now, when you have a bad gut, you're decreasing the TSH. In addition, we produce inactive T4, it gets converted to active T3. So when you have gut dysbiosis, it hinders the conversion. In addition, just like insulin resistance, on the cells, we could get thyroid resistance as well. So this is where you may have normal blood labs for thyroid, but you're still feeling thyroid symptoms. It could be your gut. Kidneys. Now, the kidneys has many functions. So one of the functions of the kidneys is to excrete all the waste materials that the body doesn't need, all the chemicals. 
So when you have gut dysbiosis, what it does, it hinders that excretion. So this is where you can have, you may have like low back pain due to kidneys. You may have increased, you may have abnormal blood labs for the kidney functions. You may have a lot of pain due to kidney because the kidney is our filter. Next, we have these two lovely hormones, which tells us we're hungry, and the other one tells us when we're satisfied. It's like a teeter-totter. You have ghrelin, which gives you the hunger response, and you have leptin produced by the fat cells that gives you that satisfactory response. So when you have gut dysbiosis, it throws it all off. This is why you're always hungry, because it, what it does, it increases that hunger. It increases the release of ghrelin. So what do you do? You want to eat. Problem is, with the fat cells, it secretes, it secretes leptin. It doesn't tell you you're full. This is why people are on bad diets, they're always hungry and they're never satisfied. So you want to clean up the diet and put those hormones back in check. Next, the liver. The liver has over 400 functions of the body. It produces hormones. It stabilizes conditions. It turns inactive vitamins to active. Inactive T4 to active T3. Inactive vitamins to active vitamins. Also, too, the liver is the filter. It's a detoxifier. And when you have bad gut function, gut dysbiosis, it's kind of like clogging the filter of your water or your filter so nothing gets through. In turn, what's going to happen, now you're in a state of inflammation, so you have skyrocketing cortisol levels. Increased cortisol levels, too, is the spinoff of increased cortisol inhibits the conversion of T4 to T3. Next, because your gut is not working properly and you're absorbing all the nutrients as you should, you're decreasing the absorption of a phenomenal mineral called zinc. Zinc has many functions, many advantages. One of them is produces hormones. So men, in particular, it, it, it hinders the production of testosterone. It doesn't matter if you're 16 or you're 60. When you have a bad gut, your hormones are not being produced. In addition, zinc is needed for hydrochloric acid. We need a proper amount of hydrochloric acid in our stomach to break down the food products once they hit the tummy. In addition, zinc is good for the immune system. So this is why people are on bad diets, they're always sick. They're in that chronic state of inflammation. So this is where it's all gonna tie together. Remember, the gut is your second brain. When you feed this bad raw materials, it's gonna affect the body as a whole. So what is going to happen? Increased inflammation. I just explained it. Now, remember the filter, the liver is a detoxifier. It's your filter. So when you, when you clog that up, just like the furnace, what's going to happen? You have what's called increased oxidative stress. In turn, we have these cells called mitochondria. And the function of the mitochondria is to produce the energy currency called ATP. It hinders that. And this is why when you're on a bad diet or you have bad gut function, you just don't have any energy. In addition, the liver produces a phenomenal antioxidant called glutathione. It helps clean out the system of all the byproducts called free radicals. So when you have gut dysbiosis, you're inhibiting the production of glutathione. So what do you do about all this stuff? Good question you ask. Very simple, remove, replace, repair, remove, re-inoculate. One, you wanna remove the insult. You wanna remove the foods that are causing all these problems. Wheat, gluten, dairy, soy, peanuts, and sugar. That will make anybody inflamed. So you wanna remove that the best way you can. Next, you wanna replace. You wanna replace the stuff that's gonna help the gut. Hydrochloric acid, digestive enzymes, bile salts, because you need this because your the mechanism that helps break down all the food products are hindered. It's broken. Why? Because it's either from stress, either from medication, either from the food, or maybe your old age. Now we want to repair. You want to repair that gut lining in your stomach. Remember, the, the stomach is a muscle. It's a smooth muscle, and one of the amino acids that's phenomenal for smooth muscle repair is L-glutamine. So you want to take L-glutamine, slippery elm, aloe vera, or etc. things like that. Also, if you have an infection, now a lot of people have an infection called H. pylori. 
you can get tested for that. Or you may have a virus, or you may have a parasite. Okay? So you want to make sure you remove the infections. And then lastly, re-inoculate the proper gut lining with probiotics. It does take some time, but you can do it. I hope this helps. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.